Start class, each of the next days, with a little centering plant yoga. There are four positions. Please follow along with me. Let's take the first position, which is called the seed. You curl up into a little ball on the ground. The second position is when that seed receives warmth and water, it will germinate. Germinate. After it knows that water and warmth are there, it needs to start finding up and down. So it will put up what we call the cotyledons. And then the fourth position will stretch out its leaves, put back its head and say, I love the sun, Rick. And Rick will say, who doesn't, Charlie? Who doesn't? <laughs> Mr. Kovacs class. It's Mr. Kovacs class. It's Mr. Kovacs class. He's interesting too. It's Mr. Kovacs class. And he's super cool. It's Mr. Kovacs class. Whoa, feel loose after all that plant plant yoga, don't you? All right, let's see what we got today. Today. Project Plant, the most important thing to know is photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is where you take carbon dioxide and water, and with the energy of sun, of sunlight, you transform those molecules into a molecule of sugar, glucose. All right, that's what you do. Glucose, think about it. Glucose is actually just how the plants take energy from sun and store it so they can use it later. The next thing we'll have to look at is what do they use it for. But today what I want to do is a couple things, but one is, What's fun uh, about, it feels real sciencey is now when we start talking about chemicals, right? Like, um, yeah, chemicals all get like a symbol, okay? The carbon's called C, oxygen's called O, hydrogen's called H. Almost all the time, I'm trying to start with the beginning of it, but you know, like potassium, it gets a K, I don't know. Right? And then we call what's called a chemical formula is, how a chemical is built. So like this molecule right here has one C, one of the black C, and one, two oxygens. We call that molecule carbon dioxide, CO2. One C, two O's. This one right here, it's got one O and two H's. Let's see, we call that H, two, Right? I mean, that's how it is. Now, if, if I put a bunch of them out here, right, well, let's put a couple more. There's another H2O. Here's another H2O. Right? We would say now that we have three H2Os. All right? And so in photosynthesis, what happens is we start with six H2Os, we add six CO2s, right? So there's 12 molecules come together. Then with a little bit of light energy, it gets transformed into one molecule of C6H12O6. That's glucose, sugar. And then there's a leftover six oxygen gas molecules, right? So this is, you know, when you see uh, scientists use these symbols, that's what it means. It's just a way of like shorthanding chemical reactions. We call them chemical formulas. Six molecules of water, right? Six waters plus six carbon dioxides makes one. I don't have to put the one in front of it. It's kind of like math. And then six oxygens, right? Like, it's like the factors. And that's that. Pretty cool, eh? I love the sun, Rick. Who doesn't, Charlie? Now, we all know that plants need soil. But we also know that plants are stuck in place. 
What do you do if you are stuck in a place where your soil sucks? No, like where your soil isn't very good. Well, I'm going to show you a couple of adaptations that you've probably heard of, right? One adaptation, probably most famous, is what we call the carnivorous plants. Okay? Although they're not really eating the carnivorous, carnivorous plants like, like Venus flytraps. They live in soil where there's not a lot of nitrogen. So in order to get, the nit like, get nitrogen, their roots can't get any out of the soil. The way they get nitrogen is by trapping insects and dissolving their bodies in their leaves and then sucking the nitrogen right into their tissues, right through their leaves. There's lots of plants that do that. Uh, fly traps, this guy's called the honeydew. And it's pretty amazing that like, they have little sensory hair, hairs that stick out of their leaves. And when the, when the insect walks on there, they fold up and then they, it's all. But you notice these plants are still green. They're still green, which means they do photosynthesis. So they don't eat the insects. They get their food by doing photosynthesis. They use the insects as soil. Because we've said before, soil is the remains of dead organisms. Well, if you're in a place where there's not a lot of nitrogen, you just gotta make your own dead organisms. Pretty smart for a plant with no brain. Uh, oh, the pitcher plant. Again, look, see they're green. And they have green, but they've modified some of their leaves to trap insects. What they do is they release a chemical, an enzyme that dissolves insects. And then usually the trick that they have is you also want to smell and look and smell like something that insects might be interested in. Now the second thing you might do if your soil isn't so good, or if you might be born in a place where the soil isn't so good, or the soil doesn't work for you, is steel. And there are some plants out there we call parasitic plants. Um, that's not what I want to show you. This, I'll come back, I'm going to work backwards. The Rafflesia, the largest uh, diameter flower there is, is a great example of a parasitic plant. Um, usually you only notice it when it flowers. Uh, most of the time, um, it doesn't have any leaves because it basically just a root that grows into, grows into the roots of nearby plants and steals from their phloem and their xylem. Around here we've got, um, this is called the Indian pipe. It's a plant, in fact, look at it. These are the flowers of it, but look at the stems. It doesn't have any leaves and it doesn't even, it's not even green because it doesn't need to do photosynthesis. It's, it's a plant, but it steals all its foods out of the roots of nearby trees. It's a parasite. And then this one actually kind of cracks me up um, because you probably know this one. This is mistletoe. Mistletoe, you know, on Christmas time where you're like, ooh, kiss your sweetie under the mistletoe, right? Mistletoe is actually a parasitic plant. Uh, it parasitizes the branches of the plant. Again, it has some leaves, so it can do some photosynthesis, but it gets all of its soil nutrients, right? It doesn't actually have roots that go into the soil. It actually burrows its roots right into the bark of plants and steals from their xylem. So they steal from these plants. So we call them parasites, they're the stealers. So yeah, it's just a great example of adaptations, you know, natural selection. If you, if you fit, you'll have more offspring than those that don't. That's it, you know? It's whatever works. All right, today, part two. I can't wait to hear your lullabies. You'll see what that is. And then your part three, we're gonna take a look at some more carnivorous plants.